Hello and welcome to the Epitome HD Demo System Training Series. This is the first video in a series that results in launching the Epitome IP PBX platform and implementing Epitome Voice over IP solutions. The Epitome HD Demo package that you've purchased from Epitome has everything you need to get started and demonstrate Voice over IP telephony. The demo package comes with one IP1200 IP PBX, 13 Epitome IP telephone licenses, and three open, that's universal, IP telephone licenses. Also in the box are one each of the following, an IP220, which is a two SIP line telephone, an IP320, which is a two SIP line telephone, an IP410, which is a four SIP line telephone, an IP620, which is an eight SIP line telephone, an IP X32, which is a 32 button expansion module that can be applied to the IP330, the IP410, and the IP620. Power supplies for each device are also included, although we will use smart PoE switches throughout these sessions since we believe this is the method of choice for professional installation. In addition to the extension licenses, your package includes Epitome's all-encompassing ACD, 16 call manager licenses, 5 additional conference rooms, scheduled announcements license, and it is ingenious enabled. What you need that's not in the box are the peripherals of the IP platform. Browsers are the first peripheral for which we need to be acquainted. The three browsers listed here are Mozilla's Firefox, Google's Chrome, and Microsoft's Internet Explorer. You should be acquainted with two or more of these browsers. If not, you should exit this training and get acquainted with them now and then return to this session. Neither Epitome training nor technical support can instruct anyone on these elementary tools of Internet protocol navigation. The next peripherals that we're going to talk about is the switch. The importance of the switch on the network cannot be overstated. The switch is the point at which all data, voice and non-voice data, is moved from one point to another. The movement of data from one network device to another is critical in voice communications. A managed switch is essential in all professionally deployed IP telephony solutions. Since the nature of bandwidth is such that what is available is used as it is needed, it is ultimately important that QoS be set on the network to give voice traffic priority over all other traffic. We're going to do an overview of QoS now and get into QoS further in future training sessions. Here's the short answer as to why the highest priority for voice traffic is a non-issue. Voice traffic requires so little bandwidth from that available on modern networks, it is almost invisible in comparison. That said, it is imperative that voice traffic have a path from point to point that is available at all times. You may be confronted by IT, that's information technology professionals, who have a problem with giving voice traffic priority over all other network traffic. They may think that this will negatively impact their perfect network. Let's dispel that myth now. Take a look at the actual bandwidth required for voice calls. This chart is a list of codecs with the associated bandwidth usage. We like the G711 codec bec because it delivers a high quality point-to-point -point sound. G711 occupies 80 kilobits considering all of its overhead. This is a one-way voice connection. Since telephone calls require two-way connections, each of the IP bandwidth requirements must be doubled. Most network deployments are capable at least of 100 megabits per second. Many today are capable of 1 gigabit per second, which is 1,000 megabits per second. Using a 100 megabit per second network example and only traffic of voice, you would have enough bandwidth for 500,000 calls simultaneously. On the chart here, we plotted bandwidth usage for a few different applications on a 1 gigabit per second network. Notice that the voice traffic occupies almost no bandwidth in comparison to other applications. When we add multiple users to any of these applications, you can see how important setting QoS becomes. As applications are deployed by users, the available bandwidth can quickly become occupied. In TCP IP protocol, this is the stuff that makes an Ethernet network work, 
If bandwidth is available when an application calls for it, it is used in its entirety. In short, voice traffic requires very little bandwidth, but it must be available when the voice packets require it. Okay, there's also a little bit of anxiety when in QoS, so we want to show you how simple this can be. This, this switch is one of our favorites, very uh, cost-effective and um, uh, useful device. It is the Netgear FS728TP. It's a 24-port PoE switch. In this switch, we just enable QoS, and then we set the trust mode to DSCP. Then we navigate to the DSCP mapping page and set the D DSCP setting that matches what we have in the PBX. In this particular case, we have a uh, CS3 set, and we're going to set that to the setting of high. So it gets the highest priority when compared to other packets that are waiting in queue to be transported on that port. That's it. So it's quite easy to deploy QoS and very, very fundamental in making sure that your voice over IP application works well. We'll talk about setting the DHC, DSCP settings in the PBX in a later session. For now, for this session, we're going to go on to the router. Routers are the part of the network that link your network from the internal domain, which is also known as the LAN, to the external domain, also known as the WAN. Routers take on many shapes and forms. They might be just software or both hardware and software. Cost of routers ranges from $40 to thousands of dollars. Usually, routers have a firewall function to monitor traffic from the WAN attempting to reach those devices on the LAN. Some advanced IP telephony features require traversing the LAN through the firewall to operate. These would include remote administration, branch office networking, remote IP phone networking, and remote command line interface access. We have a list of routers that we found to work well. We don't recommend any router because we don't make them and have no control over when or how they may change. You are urged to use our list available at support.epitome.com and select the router that you like the best. Use all the available resources to determine what router you will use. One of our favorites is the Linksys WRT54GL. You may not find this at Best Buy, but you'll have no trouble finding it on the internet. When selecting a router, look for the processing speed, quality, and its reputation for natting well. NAT is N-A-T, and it stands for Network Address Translation, and it is fundamental to deploying IP telephony. We investigated many different sources and found that the Linksys WRT54GL, when loaded with the open source DDWRT software, is an adequately performing router for the functions desired most. We should divulge a bit more about loading DDWRT at this time. For the purposes of getting your demo system up and running, flashing is not necessary but we'd recommend getting accustomed to flashing, which is loading DDWRT software onto this or a similar router to get the best performance out of the device. Flashing or loading of DDWRT software onto this router will be covered in future sessions of this training series. This router provides another fundamental operation required on the LAN, a DHCP server. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. DHCP, simply stated, is the automatic assignment of IP addresses on the network. IP addresses can also be specific. These are known as static IP addresses. But this is the exception and not the rule. You should always use DHCP for assigning generic or general devices on the network. IP addressing is the means by which all devices are found on the network. The network operates by keeping track of where devices are by the IP address, so everything gets an IP address. It is of the utmost important that no two devices on a network have the same IP address. 
you might imagine that that could create quite a bit of havoc on a voice connection. You can also see that as a network grows, the task of IP addressing gets more ominous. Fortunately, DHCP eliminates this problem by automating the process. That said, some devices, not many, should have a designated IP address or a static IP address. These devices are the PBX, the router, and any switches. All other devices should be set for DHCP so that conflicts cannot occur. The DHCP server will have the ability to select a range of available IP addresses from which to assign to devices requesting an IP address. This range is specifically set not to include those IP addresses allocated for statically assigned devices. Okay, now it's time to hook things up. Generally the topology of connections is from the WAN to the LAN. So connect the internet port of the router to your ISP internet connection. Then connect one of the LAN ports of the router to your first switch and then all the devices on the network to the switch or switches if you have multiples. Connect this one port of the router to your first managed switch, preferably to a designated uplink port which is capable of higher bandwidth. Connections to the other router LAN ports will have the effect of bottlenecking some traffic. On this switch uh, we've isolated uh, and if possible you should try to isolate voice traffic from non-voice traffic on the network. In larger network deployments uplink ports are uh, very desirable. They keep the network backbone in top form for optimum network uh, trafficking, uh, traffic handling. The basic uplink requirement or uh, dedicated uplink port is uh, 100 megabits per second. It's a dedicated channel um, of that uh, of the highest bandwidth possible. The next step up from that, a uh, more advanced um, switch, will have the capability of using uh, 1000 megabits per second, which is a 1 gigabit uh, connection. The next up from that is fiber at uh, 100 gigabits per second. Okay, from here we're going to unbox the remaining HD demo components and connect them to your switch's PoE ports. Notice that I've got green dots here with each device that connects to a PoE port on the switch. Notice that the IPX32 does not connect to the uh, PoE switch. Okay, complete the initial setup by connecting all of your telephones to the PoE switch using the LAN port on the back of the telephone. When all are connected, uh, they'll all be powered, uh, but they will not be registered to the uh, PBX. At this point, they are ready for association with your PBX. Uh, this can be done in several ways. Uh, in the next training module, we're going to use the auto provision method to install the telephones onto the demo IP PBX. So this concludes session one of the Epitome HD demo kit series. Thank you. If you don't have your demo kit yet, please contact Epitome at 941-306-2200 and select option one for sales or navigate to www.epitome.com. Thanks.